Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to the Groom Selection presentation for rising second year students. Uh, my name is Joe Hawkins. I am an assistant director in the Office of Residence Life. Um, and my, one of my primary responsibilities is working with second year students. And my name is Brian Woodruff, and I'm the director of the Home Office uh, here on campus, and we help to coordinate uh, the housing contracts as well as the room selection processes as well. And so uh, Joe and I are going to take some time here to um, go through some of the processes and some of the important uh, facts uh, that you all uh, will want to know. And uh, if we could just confirm before we get any farther that everyone can hear us. If, if someone could just uh, enter yes in the chat, we can make sure that uh, everything's working the way it should. And it sounds like we are. And as soon as, there we go. All right. And um, I do want to remind everyone that we will have time for questions at the end. Um, so if things come up along the way as we're going through um, the, uh, the different points, go ahead and send those questions through and, and we'll get those and, and work to answer as many of those as we can um, either along the way or at the end. So just a quick agenda here. You can all see the things we want to touch on. Uh, we want to talk about the residency requirement, um, talk about students uh, who may want to return to their first year living learning community, uh, options we have for student created living learning communities, um, as well as sorority corridor, the general process, um, RA information, and then of course time for questions. So I just want to start out, and I won't spend too much time on this, but just a reminder that um, at Miami we do highly value the residential experience, and so we do have a two-year uh, requirement uh, for first and second year students to live on campus. Um, so assuming that everyone who is participating today is a parent of a current first year, uh, also known as a rising second year student, um, this would pertain uh, to you all. Um, if anyone here is a parent of a uh, an older student, an upper class student, maybe a current second year who's going to be a third year next year. Um, a little different process for, for that. And actually those uh, students can be choosing their rooms right now. Um, that they just go in and pick those. So we're talking exclusively about um, the rising second year students who are currently first year. Um, so you can see here just a reminder about that. We do have a, um, a fraternity exemption. So this is for second year um, uh, men who are uh, in fraternities. This is coordinated through the Cliff Alexander Office of Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, and the students would need to be approved through a process and also joining a fraternity that qualifies for an exemption. So that's a little uh, process there. Um, and those details will be coming from, uh, from that office uh, to men who are joining uh, the, the chapters. Um, also, we do have other exemptions um, to the two-year requirement. This could be, um, there are three really standard um, exemptions, which would be if you were 21 years old by the first day of class, if you'll reside at home um, with, the, uh, with parents, legal guardians, spouses, or dependent children, um, or for students who have matriculated full-time, which means they've had two years um, together, um, combined two years at another institution of higher education, or a regional campus, um, and those would need to be post high school. Um, again, getting at the heart of the, uh, the residential uh, requirement, um, we do uh, want it to be full-time college after high school graduation. So if any of those would apply, we have a process on, on the Home Office website um, that you could request an exemption for the uh, year. You do that uh, before the room selection process. Um, and we do encourage that again, if you were planning to do that, if your student was looking to do an exemption, that uh, you would not want to participate in the room selection process because once you do that, then you no longer have that option to do an exemption. Right. Um, so I think I'll turn it over to Joe. Okay, thank you. Um, so a number of our students uh, who are currently in uh, a first year LLC um, will have the opportunity to return to that community. Um, not every community offers an opportunity to return. Um, we'll talk about what those students who don't necessarily have that opportunity, what they can do um, when we talk about student-created communities. Um, so when students choose return to an LLC uh, for, the, for, for the second year uh, experience of that, of that community, um, they're going to have a little extra responsibility. They'll help plan the, the kickoff, which is sort of the welcome back event that we do um, right when we return back to campus in the spring. Um, and they'll also contribute um, in, with helping with plan out some of the first eight weeks of programming. 
Um, and then generally they're expected to be to provide leadership in the community, to be a positive role model for first year students. Um, and they'll they'll help they'll help uh, work with uh, the application process for returning second years in the future um, in, in those communities and, and just generally help sort of help the community move forward and be successful. Um, the timeline for that, um, in order to be eligible, the students they need to already be in a community in one of those communities. So it's it's if they're if they're in the honors community, they would be eligible to return to the honors community for the second year. Um, uh, the applications are due by, by fe on February 12th to the resident director. So the, the, the professional staff that live in the residence hall will coordinate that recruitment process. Um, so they should be looking for that. And if they if they're not seeing it and they're hoping for it to turn up, they should be reaching out to their uh, to their RD uh, to to inquire about what, and when, and how that's going to look specifically in their building. Um, the applications will be reviewed, and then individuals will be approved to return. Um, through that process uh, by February 23rd, 2018. Um, so then we jump right into what they do if they're not, if their community doesn't return. Um, so there, there is an opportunity um, called them student created communities uh, that for, for students to, to sort of take some ownership of what their living experience is gonna be like um, and how that, that gets integrated with their learning experiences on campus. Um, and so, they can they can propose there's a there's an application process I'll talk about in a moment um, for them to create their own community. Um, some of the common themes include a common interest or a passion. Um, so some examples of that are uh, we have a multicultural language arts and cinema group, uh, a group called Diet, which is short for Dietary Information and Education Team, um, who works on educating uh, other students about the experience of. Um, having dietary restrictions like peanut allergies, selfish allergies, gluten intolerance, all of that kind of stuff, and working to, to advocate for um, more, more options like that around campus. Um, we also have a group called International Pen Pals that works on using writing uh, as a means to build community um, on and off campus. Um, an extension of the first year living theme or community, um, we have uh, Celebrate the Arts, Chapter Two, Social Justice 2.0, and Government Relations Second Year, um, all living learning communities that did not from last year into this year have a preset uh, returning process, and the students took some ownership, partnered with the faculty, and recreated their own. Um, and then, or or they can be uh, sort of an expression of an existing group or or an organization. So we have um, a group called Cheer Us On that's a combination of uh, members of the swimming, diving, and hockey team. Um, Red Hawk Esports. We have a NCAA electronic sports team on campus. They all live together in a, in a student credit community. Um, and then Crew and the Young Life, which are uh, religious affiliated organizations, have created three different corridors across campus um, that, that they all engage around. Um, communities who get who are selected and put into these spaces, they get additional resources and support. Um, they get a budget. They have access to staff and facilities that they might not have otherwise um, to, to help enhance their uh, residential and, and academic experience. Um, the applications for those will be live December 4th. Um, there's already uh, there's already information up and more in depth about what the application might look like, um, what they're going to be expected to do. Um, all of that is is there on on our on the community options page of uh, of uh, the Office of Residence Life website. Um, the applications will be due online February 19th. Um, that application will include will include um, a, a number of students that they intend to have. Uh, with some plans of where they're, how they're going to live, recruiting a faculty advisor, and um, then they'll come and give a presentation, um, to which on the February 27th, on March 1st, we'll be giving presentations to some of our uh, staff, students, and uh, members of the home office um, about what their community is going to look like. Um, and then we'll have that notification sent on March 5th. Um, and then we'll do a spring training, so like some training time with them in the spring, helping them put all those, figure out how to use those and access and utilize their resources. You know, I want to—I I should have mentioned this in the beginning uh, to you all, but you know, there are obviously a lot of dates and a lot of processes and things within all of this. So, in addition to this particular presentation being available to review again um, through the website, uh, we are uh, it very in very short order. We'll have our room selection website updated uh, on the home office website, mm -hmm. and all of these details will be there, um, starting with all the dates and the processes, and then even more detail explaining. Um, just more in-depth explanation of all of these processes as well. So 
it will all be in one convenient location. Um, we're just finalizing some of the, the language on that website and that should be up um, probably within a week or so. We'll have that up. So just want to make sure that you all know that. Um, so the next piece here is the sorority corridor. Um, and this process is for current first year women who um, will be new sorority members uh, and will be living in, um, in, in the corridor with other members of the sorority. Um, and so these corridors are designated within um, a few halls. You can see them here on the screen, Hamilton, Minnick, Scott, and Etheridge. And so the chapters actually designate space within those buildings. And then that's where those women are able to choose. Um, they are able to go in and choose their own rooms uh, within that, um, those designated areas. So that will be an online process that occurs after spring break. Um, it's all online. It's really easy, really convenient for them. Um, and uh, you can find more information about the entire sorority recruitment process um, at the Cliff Alexander office website um, is where you can find out more details about that. This is just the one piece as far as helping ensure that they can live together uh, for those women who are part of the, uh, the program. And then after that, uh, those are kind of our really specialized um, opportunities that, that some students may choose to participate in and others may not. Um, the, uh, the larger process is what we call a general online room selection process. And this is for all current first year students um, who did not already uh, sign up for a room uh, for 1819. So for those who didn't participate in the sorority and didn't participate in the student created, um, this is a process for you, um, and this is the largest one we have. Uh, the largest number of students will participate in this. Um, and it's, again, it's a really convenient, um, easy process online um, that occurs. And so what will happen, and this all happens on um, the website called MyCard. Um, and so this is an account that your students should be very familiar with already. It's where they go um, to learn about their room assignment, their uh, the roommate information um, to submit work requests for maintenance, all those sorts of things are all on that MyCard account. So um, this room selection portal basically appears and then they have new opportunities. And so the general outline of what happens is that we'll have a lottery online um, and that will be April 10th through 11th um, where students will log into their account, they'll enter the lottery, Essentially what happens is a, bunch, a lot of balloons are floating around on the screen and they click one and that pops and there's some applause that goes on uh, and there really is in the, in the sound, so turn the sound on. Um, and that, that will tell them their assigned time to then go in and choose a room um, during the room selection. Um, and also after popping that balloon in the lottery, they're then able to also see the floor plans online of specifically rooms that, that we'll have available um, for that, that process. And so they can be prepared to have an idea of, of where they might like to try to pick rooms uh, when their time comes up. So that was on April uh, the 10th uh, through the 11th when they did the lottery. Now on the 13th, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. is when the room selection would occur. And so students would log into their account. Um, select a room at the time they received in the lottery. So if they were very fortunate and they got 9 a.m., they'd go in right away. Um, maybe they get 10 a.m. Um, it goes all the way up until um, 8.45, I believe, p.m. is the last time frame. And those are divided out evenly among, along the day um, just to make sure that the system never gets overloaded and that students can get in um, and do what they need to do. Um, once they've selected a room, they will need to complete the contract by 7 a.m. of the following day, and that's in order to keep the room, uh, to confirm that, yes, that is the room they want, and it really finalizes that process for them. Um, in order to invite a roommate, they do need to sign the contract within 20 minutes of choosing the room. So basically, um, if your student goes into a room that is completely vacant uh, to choose that in the system, it will automatically hold both assuming it's a double room. If it was a triple, it would do the same thing. It will, the system will hold the vacant bed for them, uh, for your students, so that they could then have time to complete their contract and also invite a roommate if they have a, a particular roommate. Um, so it, it allows that to happen. Um, but after the 20 minutes of choosing that, if your student hasn't signed their contract, then that 
if there is an additional bed open, it would be released um, to others in the process. Um, and I also want to point out that um, I think going along with that, um, just to, to point out that if your student does have a, a particular roommate they like to live with, um, and one of them might get an earlier time, one gets a later time, um, whoever has the earlier time, certainly they would want to, to go in and do the process then, and then they could invite. Um, so if your, if your student's roommate had a lower time, they would go in and they could invite your roommate right into the space. Um, so even though someone might get a later time if they've got uh, a roommate, get in earlier. Um, and, uh, and then finally, for students who were not able um, or chose not to uh, participate in the lottery um, beginning at 9 p.m. on April 13th, anyone um, would be able to go in. So you would not need a lottery time at that point. Um, anyone can do that. Um, and, you know, and we do continue to have, really regardless of the time um, that, uh, that your student might receive, uh, we really do uh, continue to have just great spaces open. Um, it is possible that if they have a very late time, they may be somewhat limited in getting exactly the space they'd wanted. And so if that does happen, um, we do uh, we will begin a room change request process, and that will begin uh, the following week after this process. And that's when anyone can go right in into the, the system, put in the request, they can rank them, um, in their priority list as many as they want, be as specific or as general as they like, um, and let us know, I'd like to do a room change. Maybe it's I didn't get the building I want, didn't get the room I wanted, couldn't get with a roommate I wanted. All of those things um, can go in, and then the staff in the home office are working diligently, um, really beginning at that point all the way through the summer uh, to match hundreds of room change requests. Because our goal is to make sure everyone gets where they want to be with who they want to be. And so we're very, very good at doing that. Um, and so fear not um, if, if, uh, if your student happens to be someone who, um, no matter what time they get in the lottery, if they're just not able to get exactly what they want, encourage them uh, to uh, follow that process for doing the room change requests, and we will uh, work to help them. The final uh, useful information deadline um, is, the, is the resident assistant application process. Um, students can... Um, apply to be resident assistants, which is a, a leadership position within the Office of Residence Life um, where they we work to, to uh, help those student BRAs grow and develop um, by helping them help other students grow and develop. Um, they, they'll they work with uh, with other students on campus in fostering think, growth and engaging in things like academic success, effective community engagement, interpersonal, intrapersonal development, um, and intercultural competency. Um, and so they'll do that work in the halls um, supporting the other students. Um, the timeline for that, so the applications are actually available now. Um, the, on the, all of this is from uh, the, if you go to the, the Office of Residence Life's uh, main webpage, there's a button off to the right that says BNRA on it, um, a little red button, um, that they'll take you to, to, the, to all that information. Um, yeah, so that we'll need to fill out that application. Um, there is a recruitment fair um, that students can participate on, on the 7th, um, which is next week. Um, that that rolling in 20 minute rolling sessions starting at 5 p.m. Uh, they can go through and they'll get they'll be able to sit through and, and participate in some sessions that'll give them some insight into what the application process will look like and what it might be like to be an RA um, to give them a good sense of whether or not it's going to be a good fit for the experience they're seeking. Um, then the the application closes uh, on January 11th. Applications need to be complete at that point, um, which means that both they, part of the process is that they that each applicant needs to find a pair of references, um, and so even those references must also be be submitted. Um, so it'll be on the applicants to make sure that they're they're working with the people that choose to be their references that those are getting submitted, um, and so they should be aware of that. I think that's just important to note. Um, then we'll do individual and group process interviews. So basically, um, the weekend of the 9th through the 11th, um, they will have um, a, a, about an hour and a half window where they'll come in um, and they will do two individual interviews and then and then one group interview. Uh, it's sort of like an activity called group process um, where we get to see them um, engaging in like a team dynamic, um, doing some problem solving. Um, so they'll go through that process um, to engage around that. Um, and then we will notify the same day as uh, the the second year uh, the student creative communities will they'll get, they'll get all of this information on March 5th 
um, along with a couple of other uh, group selections that might that, that come out all around that same day, um, so that students have a, have time to sort of weigh their options and make a choice. Um, and then um, the the by March 5th, um, that's, so that's the March 5th is the day we send out those selection letters. And then the 16th, um, we need we need uh, acceptances back. So, so if your students are going to choose to be an RA, um, if they've been offered a, an alternate status, um, because we, we sometimes lose RAs over the course of the summer as they're as their plans change, um, and so they'll will need to tell us yes or yes I do want this or no I don't um, for that particular space. So. All right. Well, those that's a lot of information coming all <laughs> quick there, but that is, that is the um, the uh, the summary of all the process for the uh, second year um, for the, the rising second year students. So at this point, um, it looks like we've got a number mm -hmm. of questions that have mm -hmm. come through, and so. Um, I think we'll look forward to answering some of these questions. Mm -hmm. uh, so first one right here, uh, what's the difference between home and ORL? Um, so we are, we are we are sort of two sides of the same coin. Um, home handles a lot of the, um, well, you want to sort of, um, that's sure. how you use yeah, home? Yeah, so um, you know, I think the, the best way to, to, to know the difference is that the home office is really looking more at the housing contracts, um, the assignment process, really looking at, at times um, prior to moving in um, is a good way to look at it. Um, and then once um, students have, have actually moved into the hall, um, then, then that's where the residence life um, side, um, for, the, for the most part you could think of as it really being involved because those are the folks who are the in-hall staff, those are the, the RAs, the hall directors, uh, the resident directors that are living in the hall. They're going to be the ones um, helping with uh, you know, building community and with maybe unfortunately roommate conflicts and all of those types of things, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Um, we we were sort of on the ground in the halls mm -hmm. with the students, helping them with their learning experiences, uh, navigating conflict, getting involved, supporting them through whatever development, growth challenges that they're facing. I'm um, sort of on the personal student level. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Um, we've got a question here: Are there halls with only sophomores? Um, and um, the, officially, no. Um, we've got some halls that typically only have, or that, that typically don't have any first year students in them. So they would, and, and, and knowing that we primarily house first and second year students, we've got uh, some locations such as um, Heritage Commons would be an example. Um, Beachwood, Stone, Stonebridge, Hillcrest, some of, some of the halls that are um, primarily second year, um, but would still have a handful of third and fourth year students in them as well. We house, actually for next year, we'll be housing about 400 third and fourth year students. Um, so they're, they're sprinkled throughout. And then we have halls that are, um, a small number of halls that are strictly first year, um, and then others that are mixed first year upper class, and then some that are only upper class. So um, that's sort of how that, that's, um, laid out and then kind of following with that is a question about um, are doubles, triples, and quads available for second year students? Um, and yes, um, those we, we have mostly doubles, um, but there are a limited number of triples and quads around campus. And as they're um, uh, available, um, the second year students could certainly choose from them. Um, there's just a limited number of those altogether. Uh, so we've got a number of questions here, so just going back towards the beginning. Uh, Students who don't live, who don't want to live in an LLC next year, um, how do they choose? Do they choose their hall? Um, they would participate in the in the general lottery process, um, just, just that, that we spoke about a little bit earlier, um, and that and then yes, as part of that process, they, at their time they get to choose their hall and space um, by from what's available, um, and then can students not currently in an LLC choose one for the next year? I don't believe that's the case. Is that correct? If they're not currently living in that uh, in that particular LLC, they can't choose to return to it in the second year. Um, yeah. But that might be by they, they would they, if they're particularly interested in that and there's a reason for that. Um, I would say that they should reach out to the RD of that community um, and state that case. Um, and if there's space, I think that you know we would try to work to accommodate that as best we can. Um, and then those who pick an LLC are guaranteed that LLC. Um, if not guaranteed, will they will they know before the general lottery? Um, so the timeline for that was um, that they'll, they'll, the applications 
Um, they'll get their notification of if they're returning to that community, if they have a space by February 23rd, and then yes, at that point, they're guaranteed a space in that LLC. Um, and then the for the student created notification, it's March 5th, um, which is still before the general lottery. Um, so they'll, again, they'll be, they'll actually, uh, the, the leaders of the student created community, um, which will be students, uh, the students who propose the community, um, would then actually complete a roster that we put them straight into uh, straight into the micro system and then they'll get an email saying complete your uh, your contract commit yourself to this space um, and then that space is theirs once they sign that once they fill out that, that documentation yeah. and, and then kind of tagging off of that onto another question um, about how assignments are done for those uh, specifically for the student created communities um, basically the the group is given a block of rooms mm -hmm. uh, and then the coordinator of the group which is a, the student who's kind of heading it up um, would work through the roster of who's part of the community and where they would like to live, and then that list gets turned back into us, and that's how those assignments are made. Um, a question of if signing within the 20 minutes, are they locked into that space? Um, yes, that would then become um, their room, but, but really our housing contracts are not necessarily for a specific room, they're just for a room. Um, so absolutely you'd be able to do the room change request um, to do that. But once you do finalize that, you're not able to move yourself um, at that point. Um, and there's just a question of how the students get all this information. Um, that will certainly be coming out by email. Um, so we'll be doing, in addition to the website um, here shortly, we'll be sending out um, emails, a number of emails that will be going to um, current first-year students with all of this information, encouraging them to, to read and be aware. We'll send out a few rounds of those. Um, anytime we do that, we'll also share those with, uh, with Mark and the parents' office to make sure that, um, that they're getting out to you all as well. Um, so I got a couple of, so first is uh, how do students, um, oh, on a note of that, the, the, well also for RAs and for student credit communities, um, we recruit pretty, pretty heavily. There'll be advertisement campaigns um, on the websites, uh, around the halls, all the halls have digital screens. We'll put up advertisements in there. Um, RAs will be talking about it. We're doing presentations in all of the first year halls um, about how to apply to be a student created community if that's what, they, what they're interested in. Um, and so we, we recruit there. Um, here, there's a question here, uh, number of, minimum number of students for a student created community. Um, we say eight is our minimum uh, number. That, that's a, a small corridor. Um, and so and they, they top out around 30. Um, so that the, in a, some of our second year buildings, we have some house style um, that is basically a, a sort of zone corridor um, that, that fits about 30-ish, and so we try to top out there because um, it fits just nicely in that space, and it's bigger than that, and you start, um, it becomes a little more unyieldy for the students to manage because these are student-led communities. Um, and then how, do, how does a scholar leader LLC work? Um, so that's a, that's a, it's a very unique community. So Scholar Leader is a group of, it's a student created community that focuses on leadership and is connected with the Wilkes Leadership Institute. Um, they develop their own recruitment, the students who are participating each given year develop and recruit, create their own recruitment process um, and then recruit the next year's cohort in that community um, in Elliott and Stoddard Halls. Um, and so their application process will, their notification process is actually March 5th as well, um, which was, uh, we, 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 uh, we aligned with a little bit intentionally with the RA, with the RA notifications and with the student creators, so that's another place that they weigh in. Um, but though the, the, the scholar leader community will start recruiting on their own uh, very shortly, um, and they'll be putting out their own advertisements and recruitments. Um, are there apartment style halls available? Yes, we do. We have Heritage Commons. Uh, which is six um, six different buildings um, that are located. Uh, they're, Miami, they're Miami University housing, but they are apartment style. Um, so it's called Heritage Commons, and it's located uh, right beside the rec center. So it's a great place on campus. Um, and those are four bedroom, two bath, fully furnished, um, and they're four private bedrooms. So you have four private bedrooms. You share the two bathrooms, uh, fully furnished with full kitchens, dishwashers, stoves, all that good stuff. Um, and, the, and the furniture, of course, is, is all there as well. So we do have those. Uh, meal plans are optional there. So whereas a meal plan is required in all the residence halls um, because they have full kitchens in the apartments um, and it's a different style of uh, living there, uh, the meal plans are optional. And there are still RAs and, and a resident mm -hmm. director uh, over those apartments as well. 
um, a question of kind of back to the lottery, um, that if the, the time you get at the lottery um, for picking your room on room selection day conflicts with class or work, um, what do you do? Um, well, you would be able to go in any time after your time frame. So let's say you had the time frame of 10 o'clock, you had class until 11, you would be able to go in at 11 o'clock. You wouldn't need to wait until 9 p.m. Um, to go in. You'd be able to go in basically any time from your time frame um, beyond. So that's just when it opens up for you. Um, and then there was also a question about students who don't want to live in the an LLC next year. Um, that would be the, I would say, the, the majority of second year students would not be in a specific mm -hmm. living learning community. So the, they would simply uh, do the room selection process, uh, the general process in April, and be able to choose from all of the different um, spaces that are marked as available um, during that process. Um, so I have a question here. How do students know which halls are newer, et cetera? So I, I mean, there's there's some of the, like they see, they they amongst themselves talk and they mm -hmm. know, but is there a way in the, in the other, is there so, registering? Yes, yeah, so we have a few different ways. Um, one would be our website, the home office website, which is miamioh.edu slash housing, um, has a current list of all the different buildings and talks about them, has pictures of the outsides and things, tells how much, what's the price to live there, all those different things. Um, also talks about if it's been newly renovated or, or not, uh, typically when they were built as well. So that's one option. Um, we also have, during the on the floor plans and the room selection, um, it will divide out by here are the halls that are new or renovated, here's the halls that are not renovated, here are the apartments. Um, during that room selection process, there's a number of ways um, that students can kind of sort by how do they want to look at the, uh, the options that they would have uh, for those floor plans and for the rooms available. Um, so those are some great ways. Also, if you have any questions about it ever, feel free to just contact us and, and um, ask us as well. We're happy to, to answer those questions. Um, uh, RA is receiving, there's a question about RA is receiving discount on room and board. Um, at this point, the, the discount, the only discount they receive is that they get a, uh, a single room um, at the double rate, um, and that doesn't necessarily apply everywhere, if I'm correct, like in rooms like, um, like Heritage Commons, where they would already be having a single room there. There's no discount in that space. Um, but in other spaces, um, where they would have a double room, uh, they get that at the double, or they, they have that room to themselves at a single rate. Um, question here about uh, do how do students know where some of the other student created LLCs are? Um, that is not something we necessarily um, advertise. We starting this coming year as they as they as they um, as we've been updating our website, we'll start giving each community as they create themselves the opportunity to sort of state where they are. Um, but if, if this is asking about like for them, for students in the general lottery process to select these spaces, um, that's not really, a, there's not an opportunity there. These, these groups create themselves, um, they recruit into themselves, and then they're sort of stabilized. The coordinators, the students who, who create these communities um, can, can work with the Office of Residence Life to, to bring in students as opportunities arise. Um, there's windows of time where we can't do that, general selection, um, that's not, that's a time frame where we're sort of locked out of that. Um, but we work with students to, to, for that. Um, if they're just looking to engage with that, they can always call um, the Office of Residence Life or reach out to one of us, and we, or even really specifically me, um, and I can help them get connected to those groups if that's something they're interested in pursuing. Um, and this says specifically crew and young life. Um, those are generally coordinated um, through those, all those groups. So young life sort of helps, the, the advisors of young life help the students reproduce that group every year. Um, and so if they're part of Young Life or Crew, they should talk to the advisors there and they'll be able to tell, you, tell them how to, how to engage with that. Um, and then uh, do those who had less than desirable rooms this year get higher lottery numbers? They are completely random. They're very randomly selected. So everyone has an equal chance. Um, I have a question here about Heritage Commons. Uh, is it cleaned like the other halls? Um, I think it might be helpful just to, to describe that um, in the residence halls where there's the, you think about the, the community bathrooms, of course those are cleaned on a regular basis. Um, any rooms, our standard on campus is that any rooms um, that are private bathrooms uh, or private spaces uh, with the exception of medical uh, and disability needs, all the others are cleaned by the residents. So 
The same will be true for Heritage Commons. Um, so during the semester, students at Heritage Commons are cleaning their own bathrooms, their own kitchens. Um, and the same is true for students in residence halls who might have lucked upon uh, a room with a private bathroom. Um, they would be doing that as well. Uh, the exception is that for all of those, that um, at least once, possibly twice during the year, typically once at winter term, uh, maybe another time um, in the spring, um, our custodial staff will go in and inspect and clean those spaces. So um, certainly the students should not be expecting that um, that would be sufficient for them. Uh, it would be pretty uh, dirty <laughs> if they didn't clean it all along the way. So really it's an opportunity for students, um, you know, especially for Heritage Commons, um, of it's, it's that apartment style, right? It's, it's teach those life skills. It's, it's an opportunity um, to do that. And part of that is to, to clean your space. But our staff do go in uh, at least once um, uh, between the semesters just to inspect and also to do a cleaning of the space. All right. Um, here's a question about Heritage Commons again, um, that if four students want to go in together, could one select and invite three roommates? And yes, they sure can. Um, assuming that there was a, an apartment that was fully open, um, then that one student would be able to go in um, and invite all three roommates to the other bedrooms. That's, that's possible. Yep. And I think we're getting a couple more questions coming in here. So I appreciate it. They are good. Here's one about, um, are there specific halls for living learning communities? Yes, um, they will, um, and those do change from time to time, so we wouldn't necessarily know exactly where they'll be right now, um, but living learning communities will specifically be in particular halls. Yeah, when the, for the student-created communities, when the application goes live, that application will have a list of available halls um, that, they can, that they can see and that'll, that, that we know are, that we'll have space in for them to, to apply for, and if there's something in there if they're like, well, we really would like this community, they can still um, make that request and we can work to see if we can accommodate it um, as, as, needs, as needs allow. Um, here's a great question, and I'm glad that this came up, about studying abroad. Um, and this is really one of the benefits of on-campus living for third and fourth year students, um, or anyone. Um, and so the question is about uh, for um, third year, fourth year, junior, senior year, um, if someone wants to study abroad or only be here for one semester, um, can they still live on campus? And absolutely. Um, so that's one of the benefits is that um, for students who maybe they want to spend a semester studying abroad, maybe they're going to be student teaching um, outside of the Oxford area. Maybe they're going to be in a, a co-op program, whatever it might be that really is taking them outside of the Oxford area um, to where they would not have any other reason to be on campus. They can notify the home office um, ahead of time, so it would be for the semester prior. So, for example, right now we're learning, we're getting forms uh, completed for students who will not be with us in the spring, this coming spring. So it's, and if it was for the fall, you'd be doing it in the spring, right? So you're just one semester ahead notifying us that uh, you have plans to be away from campus. We've got a form on our website that's real easy to fill out. You just fill that out, let us know, and for that particular semester, we will cancel the, uh, the housing charges and the housing for that time. If your student were to do that, but then decide, well, I think I'm still going to be in Oxford, I've changed my mind, I'm not studying abroad anymore, they would still be held to that contract. Um, so it is exclusively for you're actually doing that program where you're not here. But there would be no financial obligation or anything as long as you're doing that program. Um, so that's a really good thing. It, it's also true if you're going to graduate. If you're planning to graduate in August, or not August, but uh, December, um, and you just need somewhere for one semester, that on-campus option um, would be really convenient for that because if you're graduating, we're not going to make you mm -hmm. pay for a room when you're graduated. We don't do that. So. I'm going to ask you this question um, because you're a little more privy to these conversations. Uh, is Thompson getting torn down? Someone saw it in a master plan document. Um, at some point in the, the, in the, the future, um, I think the question of if Thompson gets renovated or, mm -hmm. or um, Otherwise, um, it is a question that's out there. Um, it's not within the next um, even five to seven years. It, it's, okay. it would be further out when that question of Thompson um, is made. But um, within the last uh, three years or so, Thompson did get some updates. So the student rooms 
all got new furniture, new flooring, mm -hmm. new paint, and all of those things. So it got some um, some uh, some minor upgrades within the last several years. Um, what about uh, living? I'm sorry. Yeah. So um, absolutely. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm. I uh, can't read very well today. Um, so sort of related to that piece of if I'm going to be um, away for a semester, that would work for either semester. So um, if if you had a student who um, was going to be studying abroad in the fall semester um, but needed somewhere to live for the spring, we can absolutely accommodate that as well. Um, probably the best. It, it could happen a number of ways. Um, they could either sign a contract uh, with us um, during the normal process and then just notify us for the whole year and then notify us, I'm going to be gone in the fall. Um, and then we would work to make sure that they get a room assignment for the spring. When that happens, um, we may or may not be able to get them back into the exact room that they chose. Uh, and that's just because you know, we may need it for the fall and then in the spring we always have fewer students in housing than we had in the fall. And so there's a number of different intricacies to it, but absolutely um, that is something that we can certainly ac accommodate. And as well, I just like to, to make note that um, maybe um, you know, when your student is having their third year or fourth year on campus and they thought they were living off campus and something fell through and it didn't work out, uh, fall semester was terrible for some unexpected reason or just they changed their um, perspective on what they wanted to do and needed somewhere to live in the spring. That's something we can also accommodate. Um, if they wanted to come in and just uh, sign up to live with us for the spring, we can do that as well. We don't, um, yeah, we, 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 we certainly have space and we're happy to help in that way. Um, a website of wearing, uh, to see the different buildings and prices, yes, the home office website uh, would be the way to go. And so the best link to that again would be miamioh.edu slash housing, H-O-U-S-I-N-G. Um, and within that, there's going to be two sections to, to check out. Um, one would be residence, uh, I think it's called buildings or residence halls. That's going to be where it lists all the different halls mm -hmm. and tells the rate type. Now, it's not actually going to tell you the price on that, and that's because, as you all know, with the tuition promise, um, we have a number of different prices really for the same room, right, because students are promised uh, their rates for four, for four years. So you look at that building section of the website, and that's going to tell you all about the hall, and it's going to tell you if that the rooms in that building are traditional, non-renovated, or if they're new, renovated standard. Um, and then there's a section, a separate section on our website called housing rates. And that's where you would go to see what all of the different prices are. And that's sorted by tuition promise cohort. So that way you'd be able to go in and see, okay, so my student was um, a fall 2017 tuition promise cohort. Here's the price they would pay for that non-renovated room or the price they'd pay for that, um, that standard double room or single, whatever it might be. Um, so we've tried to, to group that together in such a way that it can be as straightforward as possible uh, with the complexity of the different uh, tuition <laughs> promise prices. And it looks like that's, uh, that's the questions we've got. So I just want to thank you all for, for joining us today and uh, for your great questions. And, Part of it. Yeah, thank you very much.